Hey there YouTube, how you doing? Here we go, another episode of uh, the S100 build. Almost finished, we need to put some shipping lights on, so I ordered some... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Don't let me off, I just touched the terminals together, that's why it went beep. Um, okay, yeah, I ordered some uh, 3mm 12V um, LEDs, different colours, from... Uh, I think I'm from Amazon. Um, quite cheap, I think there was a tenner for 60 of them. Um... And I wanted to see, because it rated it only 12 volts, no other voltage is given. I know LEDs can take any voltage until you blow them, um, but I just wanted to make sure. So we've got it on uh, the uh, Volti thing, and uh, I've got it up to 7.66, which are all I need, really, because there's only 7 volt batteries in there. So that'll do. Um, let's see if I'll go up to 12. Let me get the phone sorted out. Right, we pointed in the right direction. Come on, stand up. There we go. Let's get the voltage in. It's just in the screen. Tip it back a bit. Here we go. So let's see if we can go up to 12 without blowing it. Yeah, getting bright all the time. Yeah, so it easily takes 12 volts. Nice and bright at 12. Not that noticeable -y darker at seven so happy with that and the minimum voltage it will take is oh look at that so two volts minimum voltage to light this up that's pretty damn good so three mil 12 volt rated uh leds uh 60 of them come from amazon um, with tails already on makes life easier and they were tenner so so pretty cheap uh, but more than that, I'm happy they'll do it 7 volts nice and bright for the shipping lights on the S100. So that's exactly what we're going to use. Uh, and next you'll see us taking the boat apart to get ready to fit these. There she is, my baby. Looking better and better every day. I just keep on doing little bits more to her as the days go by, just to make it a bit more, you know, a bit more real. So let's take her apart and get ready for fitting these, these lights. The lights are going to go... Uh, you need one there on the port and another one on the other side of the starboard. Then we need a light here. I think this is going to be a white light. A uh, white light at the back there. And a, I think that would have been red at, above the hatchway. Uh, but it's going to be red anyway. I can have it any colour I want, to be honest. Once the hole's drilled and I've got the wire up, I can swap and change as I like. But I can't find any, any record of, of what actual colours these were. Obviously, in port on the starboard, you had green and red. That's a standard shipping thing, I think. Um, so that's exactly what we're going to do. So we've got the first of the holes drilled down through the uh, deck as well. So I'm just going to tidy those up a little bit with a, with a little file. So I've got other stuff to uh, glue onto there. Um, <clears throat> and they are not going to take well if we've got a dirty painted on surface. There's still some of the old PE, the photo etch left there from the is it starboard or port side i don't know shipping terms i'll have to learn them uh, <clears throat> but i'll have to clean that off so i can get my say on it stick to it so we'll try and resemble the shipping light as much as possible um shipping lights are fairly easy to do i'll get some wire cut and uh, just to go around there to give it some protection uh, that should be fine so i'll clean this up next to you see and i'll be poking the led through so we are drilling the hole earlier we've got the green one on now that's on the starboard side. I've just had to look this up on Google, by the way. And on the port side, you have the red light. Um, at the front there, we're going to have a white one, thanks to Dougie, Bold and Dangerous, for suggesting that as a, as a spotlight at the front. Uh, that's this one here. And then at the rear, we've got two lights, one above the hatch. Where's the hatch gone? There's the hatch, one above the hatch. And one at the back of the boat. So altogether, we'll be adding one, two, three, four... Uh, one, two, three, four, five more lights to this. Um, and I nearly shorted it out there because my connectors are touching each other. Um, so let's do the red one next. Uh, obviously, I'll be putting some furniture around that to make it look a bit more like a ship light. Uh, that means bending the wire, getting it glued in place. So I've got the deck now hanging <laughs> from the ceiling of my workbench. Um, the, if I flip it over, you'd be able to see the wiring. I've tidied the wiring up considerably. Um, let's go around the back of it so you can see the wiring all nice and tidy. I don't know how clear that is. It's very dark because um, I wanted to show the lights off. So the navigation lights are fitted. We've got the uh, green on the port or starboard, whatever. <laughs> I'm sure I've got it correct. Everyone on the live stream was telling me which side the lights should go on. Green on the uh, right side, uh, red on the left. Uh, I put a blue one in the middle. 
because I didn't know what colour the, the middle one was supposed to be. I've still got the searchlight to put on. Um, that'll be later in this video where I've got, I'll have to scratch build it because I've lost the proper searchlight off it. So it'll look similar. Um, I've put some strengtheners around the lights. Let me just turn the battery off so you can see it. Some like protection. Um, I've got to paint that in. And I've made housings out of brass for the uh, lamps. Not World War II correct at all. Um, <laughs> but it's, it just looks the part, to be fair. Uh, let's get right in close there. I don't know if you can... There we go. Bring it back a bit. So that'll get painted up. So all the other deck lights are on for the portholes. There's also a couple of lights in inside the armoured cupola, but you can't really make them out with the brightness of the navigation lights that I've put on. Uh, maybe so I might turn that, turn them down a bit, add a couple of resistors and drop the voltage. Uh, at the back as well, we've got the stern light. Again, that's in a nice brass housing. Um, but yeah, it's looking great, I think. Um, so that's the deck. We're almost 100% finished on this. Almost 100%. What do you mean, 99%, 97%? I don't know. Uh, we'll keep on going with it. I'm sure there's loads more I can add to it. I might even add some figures to this at the end of the day. Uh, we'll see. But that's the deck. Um, let me uh, just hold it up so it's the right way around. All right, there we go. The reason why I've got it hanging is because when I was moving things around, I've already broken off one of the whip aerials. Um, and I keep on breaking stuff on it, so... There she is, man. She's looking good. Okay, guys, here where we is where we are with the uh, carry box for the S one hundred. I've got the inserts in where it's going to rest. Uh, I managed to cut them out just copying the ones that I already sat on and then extending it a bit for the width of the box. Plenty of room to get my hands in down the side to get her out. Um, and I've put a, a couple of little leather strips there to stop, um, stop the boat getting damaged, the hull getting damaged. So we're going to paint this up, a bit more decoration on the outside, some weathering as well to make it look like a, a proper ammo box. So uh, there's going to be strips down here, uh, strip down there. As we go around, it's nice and solid, um, nice and square as well got enough room at the back and at the front um, to put some padding in for the boat so it doesn't move anywhere and uh, when I put the lid on there's going to be um, some padding on top as well I need to find two points on the boat where I can clamp it down with some uh, foam um, so it doesn't bounce up and down when we uh, travel um, <laughs> it's going to be difficult because it's a very busy uh, busy deck on the, on the boat so uh, these are the uprights on the box that I'm using. These are rescued from some old garden furniture, but it was nice hardwood. So this was basically the, the tabletop that was in the kitchen. Um, it's got a great patina on it, but if I varnish this, it's not going to last too long. So what I've done is I've sanded them down a little bit. Still left a little bit of the patina, so, but just enough so that the varnish can uh, grip. Um, well, I'm saying varnish. I don't know if I'm going to do this uh, Chanel boot, uh, not Chanel boot white, um, field grey as the ammo cases sometimes were, but towards the end of the war, they didn't even paint the ammo boxes, so, um, yeah. We'll see when we get to it, but those will be the uprights, and all rescued from, from garden furniture. Uh, so I would advise you, if you're about to throw out any garden furniture, strip it down. Usually it's made of hardwood. If it's pine, sling it, because once it's rotten, it's rotten, but hardwood tends to just have a coating of, of bad wood on it, which you can quickly sand off, and inside you've got good, good solid wood. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's for the uprights. Uh, next you'll see is me attaching them. And the YouTube. So here we go. Then we've got the uh, side uprights on, and the box is looking pretty good now. Uh, we've got lid to make yet, so that should be cool when we get that done. I'll be making that um, now. Uh, and inside I've got the bits that the boat sits on. Obviously, all I had to do was draw around the original stand for it. Um, and then cut a piece, a couple of pieces out to go in. I've covered the tops with some nice soft leather for now, so it doesn't uh, damage the boat when I sit her in. I'll get some imagery of that when uh, the time comes. But yeah, she's looking good. Uh, she's all even and straight as well, so when I put the lid on, um, she's going to be fine. 
beautiful sunny day. Mikasa. <laughs> there you go, Dougie. Look at that, eh? Me and uh, Dougie, bold and dangerous, we've both got the same car, so uh, we both know how good they are. Just a little family car, but really spacious inside, deceivingly so. Okay, well, we just got down to uh, sizing up the lid, and uh, I haven't got enough plywood left to do a full length in one go. So this is going to have to be in, in two pieces, with a join down the middle or towards one end. Uh, also, whilst doing that, I noticed that... Uh, well, you can see I've already lopped one off, but some of the screws have come through and left uh, really sharp edges. So what I'm going to have to do is take them out, shorten them down a bit and put them back in. Because uh, there's not a lot of chance that, that they'll damage the boat, but uh, just in case, you know, gashed hands and stuff as you reach in to grab it could happen. Um, so, yeah, uh, we'll do the lid in two parts, I think. Okay, so there we go. Uh, the lid's done. Uh, a little bit of trimming needed just to take the plywood inside to match the edge of under there uh, then hinges go on um, been a real battle to try and keep the weight down on this so I've um, I haven't strengthened the inside at all so all the uprights are screwed in from the back of the plywood uh, I'm going to need obviously some kind of cushioning at each end for the boat um, no need for suggestions on that one. I'll have some foam covered in leather for those. Um, so yeah, lids on, and a good use for the old, and a good use for the old um, garden table. <laughs> so that's where we're at. I'm just going to stick the model in, make sure it fits. Okay. So as you can see, we've got some space at the back there for some cushioning, space at the front for some cushioning, and it's a good fit. I've got some more touching up to do on the boat, that's for sure. <laughs> After moving it backwards and forwards and trying to get it fit. So let's try and get an overhead. There you go. So that's that for today. Um, kind of pleased with things have gone. I'm gutted that I couldn't get to the pond due to... Uh, Being completely overgrown with rushes and stuff, but there you go. So the inside's going to be completely clad in leather. Um, the leather came from a bunch of old chairs and a settee that I rescued, but it's beautiful and soft leather. So, um, yeah, there we are. That's it for today. Um, thanks for watching. Um, like, subscribe, help me out with YouTube <laughs> algorithm, um, and we can do some, some good stuff with these. Okay, now we've got the box almost done. Um, we've got to start thinking about how we're going to decorate it. Obviously, I want it to look a little bit like a, an ammo crate from World War II. So, uh, we need to start thinking about uh, Kriegsmarine um, emblems and stuff like that. Obviously, the eagle is pretty standard on most uh, German ammo boxes. And then we've got the numbers or, 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 or the name of whatever's in it. So, obviously, we can't use uh, this thing anymore. Uh, because it is completely offensive. So obviously with the eagle we can't use the swastika that was in the middle because it's offensive and uh, I'm not that kind of person. So I think in the middle of there I'm just going to do uh, an LH <laughs> and then the German eagle and that'll be stenciled. Uh, I've already begun stenciling, cutting it out. So this is going to look pretty cool. Uh, this is just a normal piece of paper printed out from a printer. I coated it with uh, sticky glue on the back, stuck it to some plastic because uh, I'll be wanting to use this again. Um, and then when it goes to put it on there, I'll just use the same spray uh, glue, just leave it out overnight so it's not absolutely sticky as hell, just a little bit tacky, and then slap it to the side of the box in the middle there and give it a good old spray. So that's the plan. Oh, the, the plastic sheet I'm using, it's just, uh, you can buy this on, on eBay, just A4 plastic sheet, really, really skinny. So that's that. So I've just rattle canned the uh, box or our ammo crate, I should call it. Uh, just a quick rattle canning because it doesn't have to be brilliant. It's going to be an ammo box. Uh, I'll do some weathering on it as well. Slap some chains across it and make some cut marks and dents and things. Uh, but that's ready for the stencil to go on now. Um, I'm going to coat the inside, well, layer some uh, nice soft leather on the inside so no damage happens to the boat that's still to happen uh, but we'll get the stenciling done first 
Okay, so we've got the stencil all nice and cut out now, and I've given it a coating of uh, low tack glue. It's going to let that dry for a while, so it just uh, remains lightly tacky. I don't want it sticking to the box any when we go to uh, actually do the spraying, but that's come out pretty well. There's a couple of details I'll have to add afterwards, like the LH in the middle there, remove the swastika. Um, yeah, pleased with that. Bit of old fashioned uh, 3D, <laughs> 3D printing. <laughs> Uh, I just wish I had one of those gadgets that uh, Sparky's got over at uh, over at his channel, where it just prints it out for you. That'd be awesome. Uh, one day eight. Anyway, that's done. Uh, next up, we'll we'll get the spraying done. Well, I'm hoping the camera's going to stay where it is, so I can show you the spraying. Um, obviously, we're going to go light coats, lots of light coats on this, and it doesn't have to be perfect. Cause it's a stencil, World War Two ish, so it's going to be rough as. Um, the glue's left lots of little bubbles on it, which I, mm, I thought about removing, but it's actually going to add to it. So let's uh, go. Obviously, I want to be holding this square on. And what we don't want is dribbles. So light coat, light coat, light coat. I'm holding it quite a distance away so it, while it dries as soon as it hits. So let's go. A bit too much coming out right now, so I'm gonna have to let it dry. This is fluttering, I think I've got bits in it. So let's let that dry for a minute. Obviously, I don't know how this is gonna come out because I've never tried this before, to be honest. So uh, it really is a suck it in the sea time. Oh, that I didn't want to happen. Black paint everywhere. That's why I wasn't getting much out, to be fair. Just let me mop up a bit. It was bound to go wrong. And it did. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't screw the bottle on properly. So, I'm going to have to leave that as is on there. Anyone who lives nearby who's a subscriber is going to see me cycling into work with my bike covered in black paint. Okay, I think I've done that now. Let's put you back on. I have to mix some more black paint up now. Come on. think we might be there, you know. A little bit more over here. Try to keep it as square on as I possibly can. Wow. Are we ready for the reveal? Let's see how that's done. Thing is, I can always <laughs> overpaint it and redo it if I failed. So let's have a see, shall we? I'm dying to see what this looks like, to be honest. Ready? Let's start off. Okay, are we ready? Take her off. Oh, man. I am more than happy with that. <laughs> there we go, boys and girls. Quick stencil, obviously. I've got some bleed under there. The glue didn't stick properly. Um, I've taken a bit of the wood off with it there. But I think for a rough thing for World War II, I think that's fine. 
There we go. The stencil is done. <laughs> Excellent. Now I've got to do the same on the other side. Uh, but the other side, I think I'll do differently, just less. I think I put far too much paint on there. Or did I? I think there's more that the glue didn't stick properly. Well, not the glue didn't stick properly. It's an uneven surface. I was never going to get it perfect with it being rough wood. So, yeah, I'm happy with that. That'll do for a, an ammo crate. That wouldn't have been that perfect on ammo crate anyway. Well done. So, there she is, gang. And there's the paint I spent all over my bike. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, well, there we go. I've just uh, added a few more details to the eagle just to finish it off, make it look a bit more like an eagle. And uh, there's the cutout from uh, the original. Oh, I've got a little eagle there. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've put the lid on. Got the hinges to go on as well. Probably do that uh, tomorrow. But I'll cut the video here. Um, yeah, like, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. Or not. I'm walking towards the pond and oh my god it looks like it's completely overgrown but anyway the boat's ready to go I guess we just gotta wait and plus this park is closing on the 1st of June for six weeks for renovations so I'm not going to be able to get to it but hopefully after the run is renovations um, We'll be able to get down here. Let's uh, get onto the viewing platform. This is a nightmare. <laughs> Hang on. Using my arms as a steady cab, just nuts. So this is the pond. <laughs> there is just nothing left of it. Um. <laughs> oh my god. The reeds just completely took over. This might have to be a winter thing. Um, let's uh, walk up here. Oh, nearly fell. Oh, scary tree. <laughs> but there is still the remnants of a stream which I might be able to get onto with the boat. Let's uh, have a look around here. So this is a stream that fills that pond. As you can see, the level is right down. And we've only had one day of sun. It's been raining for weeks. I just don't get it. So that's the stream. I might be able to get the boat on there if I remove all the debris. Um, and hopefully there's enough power from the motors so I can be able to run up and down stream. Um, and maybe we could laser some of them bugs. Hang on, can I zoom in on the bugs? Just covered in mosquitoes. So, yeah, this is the, uh, <laughs> this is what we're going to do. But I'm devastated. The pond is actually just a bank of grass and uh, rushes. So, well, that's it. Job scuppered. Guys, I think we found the bit where we're going to take the maiden voyage. Nice and shallow out to about five metres. And it's not very fast moving, so that's going to be perfect.